Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday, August 16th here in the Atlantic, still watching Invest 92L here in the southern Gulf of Mexico, crossed the Yucatan yesterday and is now out west of the Yucatan, centered right here. And uh, you can see it's actually developed a closed low now, spinning away counterclockwise nicely, closed low, not something it had before reaching the Yucatan. So this is an improvement in terms of organization, uh, but it is still struggling. The low level center is here, but there's another spin that you might be able to see right here. This is more in the mid to upper levels and these two are decoupled and while that is true the system is going to maintain this sheared look with lots of thunderstorms off to the east of it but not so much over and west of it and unless it can improve that situation it's going to struggle developing here you can see it's remained rather stationary um, but the, the little center here has made just a very slight counterclockwise loop today, ever so slightly, which suggests to me that there may be a little bit of a low level feature developing underneath of this uh, mid to upper level low to the northeast. And so we may see kind of a double barreled look to the system where it's kind of elongated this way. And this is again bad news because if this part at all uh, deepens, then it's going to throw all this moisture away towards uh, this front that's lying across the south gulf coast here, and uh, or the north gulf coast rather. And this is going to happen either way, but if anything at all tries to develop here, it takes even more moisture out and throws it towards the front, leaving very little for the main low back here. And uh, you can see that there's not much going on on its western side. This air here isn't actually that dry, uh, but what is dry is this air uh, coming down with the shortwave trough that came through Oklahoma last night. This is digging in and it will bring even more moisture out to the northeast and shove all this dry air right down uh, to the west of 92L into the western gulf. So things are not going to be very favorable for this system. They've never been expected to be. Uh, again, we've never expected a hurricane blowing up in the gulf this week, but uh, there's still the chance that it could organize into a weak tropical storm as this trough lifts out. It's digging in right now, uh, but it's very quickly going to start lifting out a little bit over the southeastern U.S., leaving perhaps a little bit of breathing room Room before this thing comes ashore on probably around Monday and uh, it might try to develop right before coming ashore if it has any moisture left if this front here hasn't robbed all of the moisture from it then it might try to develop but I really don't see this thing getting any stronger than a weak tropical storm at this point if it develops at all it very well may never get a name if it does it'll be for Nan which is the next one on, on the list since we had Aaron develop yesterday and the track idea with this here really hasn't changed. The forecast reasoning has been the same uh, for the last week. This was where we had it going eight days ago, and this is where the models have it going today. So really no changes here. I expect the landfall of whatever is left of this, if it develops or not, probably going to be anywhere from just south of the Rio Grande Valley up to maybe Corpus Christi in this area here. So northern Mexico, south Texas, probably going to get this to come ashore in whatever form it's in. We can hope for some rain here in south Texas. The models really don't show much, and the sad truth of it is, if most of the moisture gets robbed and sent into the north central Gulf Coast here, which is going to get a lot of rain over the next couple of days. They're going to get more rain from 92L than the actual landfall location is here. And if there's not much moisture left, we may not actually see a lot of rain in Texas here, but we can keep hoping. And if this develops into a weak tropical storm, then we could get some showers and thunderstorms in here. So there is hope for some drought relief in that area. Now, after 92L is gone here, um, there may still be a reason to keep just a wary eye on this area of the world because we have a couple tropical waves, one over Puerto Rico and one east of the Lesser Antilles, both coming west-northwest towards the uh, Bahamas, Western Caribbean, and Eastern Gulf of Mexico area. And the only reason I mention these is because this is the pattern, uh, the upper level pattern by day five on the GFS Ensemble means showing the tut or upper trough extending all the way down here in a zonal fashion, which means east to west oriented. Look how flat left to right it is in here. And uh, when you get it like this, you get upper lows cutting off along it and it's very easy for tropical waves to bust through it if you will and to be able to allow upper anticyclones to expand and give them breathing room so to speak uh, to develop thunderstorms in this area of the world and this is actually exactly what happened with 92L which has allowed so much to go on in this area of the world the last few days when you get these flat upper troughs um, in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean region, we always have to watch tropical waves coming in from the southeast. And in, in, addition, in addition to that, we have high pressure over the next five uh, to seven days 
over the eastern United States, and this is increasing the pressure gradient over the Florida Straits, Bahamas, eastern Gulf of Mexico region, and you can see pressures are low in here. And uh, this means faster trade winds than usual coming into Florida, and uh, usually fast trade winds such as down here in the Caribbean are detrimental for tropical development, but fast trade winds farther north than normal are a problem because it means tropical waves can propagate from the southeast into the pressure gradient, and tropical waves moving into a pressure gradient can mean enhanced vorticity and it can help them develop low pressure. So overall it makes the situation more unstable in this area. So even though no models actually show development of anything during the next week, I would keep an eye on some of these waves coming into this area over the next five to seven days. Just something to watch for in case anything develops here. But again, nothing forecasted by the models at this time. So here's Aaron out here in the eastern Atlantic. Again, kind of dying here. A couple of thunderstorms going off with it, but it's headed into stable air, and it doesn't look like it's going to be able to sneak west north of the islands, and it will probably recurve out, recurve out to sea here eventually during the next week or so. Not going to be a big storm out there, but we have an absolutely mammoth wave behind her over Africa right now. Had a massive MCS develop it develop with it last night throwing up an upper level ridge in front of it. This will be coming off, could very easily develop into another storm, either Fernand if a 92L doesn't develop, or Gabriel if Fernand does develop from 92L. So uh, this is coming off, and Aaron here is the first in a long line of these things that I think isn't really going to stop for the next four to six weeks. There's this one, there's another one behind it that we can't see yet, and uh, they're just gonna keep coming off one after another. That's what the European and GFS are showing, and uh, they're starting to develop some of these as they come off. And again, the MJO is starting to come into our area of the world during the next four weeks. This is the European forecast for the next month. This is the largest incursion into phases one, two, and three that we've seen forecasted from the European all summer long. So this is something to watch now. If the European and the GFS agree on the MJO forecast, um, it's more than likely to come true compared to when they disagree, which they were doing all through the earlier part of this summer as we talked about. The European usually wins those battles. To have it actually come out here indicates upward motion is going to return to the Atlantic and uh, this region of the world is probably going to light up with Cape Verde waves uh, coming off Africa and uh, some of them could threaten the islands or the United States down the road considering how many of them are coming off it all will depend on the steering pattern uh, but the bottom line is uh, we're going to get into the peak of the hurricane season in a favorable setup for storms to develop out here in the eastern Atlantic and come west some of which could potentially threaten land given the steering pattern this year so we will see what happens and keep watching out for all of these. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.